Hello, hello, hello. Duplicate copies are good, right? Yes, always back up your photos. That's what today's video is about. We're going to talk about best practices and my personal preferences for backing up photos and videos, both at the desk and then also during dive trips when we're at resorts or on liveaboards. We're going to talk about computers and laptops and external hard drives. We'll talk about the cloud. We'll talk about RAID systems and even little things like backing up images on thumb drives. So stay tuned. Oh no, it's not happening again, is it? Backing up your underwater photos and your underwater video is essential. You just never know what could happen. You might have a memory card corrupt, you might drop a hard drive, you might have a hard drive or other gear stolen. I've heard of that happening going to and from the airport or a pickpocket. Just the other day, I was pulling an SD card out with client footage on it in my kitchen, dropped it, it must have hit my shoe, went in a crack between the tile and the cabinets, this big, maybe a quarter of a centimeter, managed to slide in there. Luckily, I used tweezers and a knife and got it back, but just this goes to show that you just don't know what will happen, so the best practice is to always back up your images. Most professional photographers will tell you that you ideally want three copies of your images, a primary copy, a backup copy, and a third copy kept somewhere off-site, which could mean a different bag when you're traveling, or it could mean an off-site location separate from your home or your office. One of the best practices for storing your underwater photos is to keep them off of your machine. So if you're using a desktop, a laptop, or a tablet, or even your phone, you wanna keep those files off of your machine, ideally, to keep that machine running as fast as possible. So we're gonna talk about all those different options here, depending on whether you're at home, you're traveling, and the type of gear you're using. But let's start with laptops, computers, and hard drives. For those of us using desktop computers or laptops, backups are easy. It can be as simple as storing your images on external hard drives that plug right into your computer. If you have a desktop, you may wanna look at a dedicated drive that sits inside of your computer, but otherwise these plug-in external hard drives are just such a simple solution. Just drag and drop your images and now you've got the backups right there. The only things to be aware of are one, purchasing a hard drive that has enough space for the volume of photos you're going to want to store on it, and two, to make sure the connection is fast for your machine. These days, that's going to be USB-C or USB 3.0. When traveling on dive trips, when every single gram of weight matters in your carry-on and your checked bags, I don't take three full-size hard drives. What I end up doing is taking my primary hard drive, then I'll run backups on a small solid state drive. Look how small this thing is. You can get a lot of memory in a tiny, reliable hard drive that serves as a great backup or primary drive or however you want to use it. But I'll use one of these for traveling. And what I might also do is use old SD cards or old memory cards that aren't fast enough for my new cameras, but are plenty fast and work very well for storing images as backups when I'm on trips. So I'll use these old SD cards as my third or even fourth copies of, of key photos or hero photos from certain shoots. So that way I can get a lot of memory, a lot of storage, and not take up a lot of space when I'm traveling, regardless of whether I have an internet connection. As long as we're talking about the internet, let's mention the cloud. Now the cloud is a powerful backup system that is automated in many cases, making it really easy to use. If you're editing your photos and storing your photos on a tablet, the cloud is great because it will sync those photos and do those backups in the background. The only thing you have to know is that you need a powerful internet connection. Now, for those of us who travel to remote dive resorts or live aboard boats, you know that internet connections aren't available or aren't reliable oftentimes. So that might mess with your cloud backup and I would highly advise having another system when you don't have a strong Wi-Fi connection. But other than that, there are a number of cloud backup services, whether you use your operating system, whether you use a third-party service like Dropbox or something like Adobe and their cloud backup. RAID systems are another way to back up your underwater photos and videos. You might have heard this if you started doing research on good backup systems. Now, one great thing about RAID systems is they offer multiple copies and multiple backups in case you do have a hard drive fail or something like that. On the negative side, they're extremely expensive. So investing in a RAID system is something you need to think about more. You won't travel with the system because it's too many hard drives, it's gonna take up too much space and weight. So you'll need a different system for travel before you come back home and plug into your RAID system and get those updates going. 
Personally, I don't mind using several independent hard drives because I know there's no software linking them together. I know they're fully independent. I drag and drop my photos and nothing is going to cross between those different hard drives. Whereas with a RAID system, I have heard those horror stories with software where the entire RAID system gets wiped or has a bug or corrupts and you lose all your photos because those drives are linked. So that's something interesting there. And as long as I'm sharing that, I have had issues with the cloud as well too. So even though the cloud should be bomb proof and not allow you to lose any copies, there are ways where you might delete something by accident. So I go back to my old school system of multiple hard drives. I drag and drop in the background while I'm working on my computer. And that seems to be the best way for me personally to back up my photos. With that said, let's share a few different pro tips. Number one is to leave your photos and videos on your memory card until you've made backups on your computer and your hard drive. The reason is that this is a simple backup copy. Our SD cards for most normal cameras now are pretty affordable, so that almost serves like a hard drive for you. Leave those images alone until you've got your backups and then reformat your memory card to use it again. Tip two has to do with memory cards as well, which is not to take that memory card and put it in the camera, computer, camera, computer, camera, computer, as you move it back and forth between operating systems, you run the risk of something corrupting. I've had it happen, it's not fun. So best practice is to pull that memory card out of your camera when you're done for the day or the dives, put it in your computer, run your backups, and only then reformat the card in your camera. So you're using the camera software to reformat the card, and then you're clear, you're clean, you're ready to shoot the next day. Tip number three for me is to do a big wave of deletions before I do my first backup round. Now, if I import my photos into Lightroom, I can go real quickly and hit that X key, bang, 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 and take out the instant deletions. And on an average day, I'll probably delete half my photos without needing to look twice, zoom, or anything like that. So that will immediately reduce the file size and the amount of data you're working with as you make your backups before you start digging in and doing your more precise selections and editing. Tip number four is important when you're using Adobe Lightroom. Now we talked about backing up our actual image files and those raw files on our hard drives, but you also want to back up the backups folder that Adobe creates. Now you can configure Lightroom to run backups at different periods and different intervals. I set mine to be prompted every time I log out. I don't always click backup depending on how long it's been since I've um, done some serious editing or some metadata work. But when I do have that backup, I will take that backup folder and I will copy that to my external hard drives or the cloud to make sure that it's backed up. I will also back up my catalog. And that's important as well that you back up the catalog in addition to the backups folder. If you need to restart Lightroom fresh, you'll have your images, you'll have your backups, which apply all your edits. But if you don't back up the catalog, you're going to lose your presets and other important customizations that you've added to Lightroom. So I make sure to back up those three things every time I'm backing up Lightroom. Again, that's the images, that is the backups folder, and that is the catalog itself. If you back up those three things, you can install Lightroom on any machine, load in those three things, and you'll pick up right where you left off like nothing happened. So I hope those tips are useful for you. I hope this talk about backups was useful for you. Leave questions if you have them down below, and I'll see you in the next video.